The objective of this course is for the student to be able to read the sacred script of our ancient African ancestors. We are all students and we are all teachers. Our African ancestors left us reminders of who we are. These reminders were written in stone, on papyri, and on walls. Know Thyself, reading Medonetia, lesson four. This is an aerial view of the unfinished Tekken, or Albus. It was um, found outside the city of Aswan, and it was scheduled to be placed at the Temple of Amun in Karnak. Tekken is a triliteral, which can be spelled out using monoliterals. Tekken um, is comprised of T, which is loaf of bread, K or KH, which is the placenta, and the ripple of water, which is the N. The plural of Tekken is Tekkenu. Uh, Tekkenu would include uh, a W to indicate plurality. It can be shown with three Tekkens. To give uh, some reference to the location of the unfinished Tekken, uh, we can identify Giza, which is up near Cairo, and it's in uh, northern part of Egypt, which we say is down north because the river Nile flows from south to north. The Giza pyramids were built around 2680 BC. Uh, the Tekken uh, was being constructed around 1473 BCE, uh, which shows that the pyramids are at least 1207 years older than the Tekken. The unfinished Tekken is located in a granite quarry outside the city of Aswan. Uh, the city of Aswan is approximately 530 miles south of Giza. The unfinished Tekken was destined for the Temple of Amun at Karnak. Karnak is in what is today called Luxor. The ancient name of it is Wa'at. I will include a link to give more information about this unfinished obelisk. Another interesting bit of information is that many obelisks have managed to find their way out of Africa. Some in Rome, some in Paris, some in London, some in Istanbul, Turkey, even one in New York City. In Washington, D.C., there is a building in the shape of a Tekken. It is not technically a Tekken, it is a hollow building. The unfinished obelisk is one solid piece of granite and is 3,500 years older than the Washington Monument. In this lesson, we will build upon information that we learned in lessons one through three. We will attempt to read the visible text or Medonetia on one side of the four sides of an obelisk that is located at the Temple of Wa'at. The standard translation for the uh, word medu is a staff, and uh, for Necher is a flag. Um, it combines to suggest that this represents the speaking God, a God speaks. The staff is a walking stick, so it could also be interpreted as the walking stick of the Necher. The meadow netya on this tekanu is presented in three vertical columns. We read these columns from top to bottom 
into the faces of the birds or the seated deities. It's always uh, good for us to begin our studies by looking at the Hinnus. Uh, we have studied Hinnus from Lesson 1. This Hinnu is somewhat familiar. It is also the Nasu Bitti name. Um, from Lesson 1, we remember that we saw Ra as a solar disk. We also saw Ma'at. Ma'at is seated with an ostrich feather and is holding the Ankh below Ra and to the left of Ma'at. We see the head and neck of a canine. This is transliterated as WSR and pronounced Usir. Uh, the next new symbol for this lesson is the as or cutting tool. It's a triliteral. Uh, in addition, there is a solar disk, Ra, and the ripple of water, N. The as symbol is pronounced Setept. Uh, so we get Setept in Ra for the as symbol, the ripple of water, and the symbol for Ra. Setept in Ra. So we can read this Shinu as Usir Ma'at Ra Setept in Ra. I identified this as the Nasut Biti name, even though there is no Nasut Biti in front of the Shinu. In this case, we do not have the Nasu Viti as in the previous lesson. We see the familiar bilateral basket without a handle, Neb. Neb is followed by two tongues of land, Ta Ta or double Ta. To indicate a double, we use Ui. So this becomes Ta Ui. So in place of Nasut Biti, we have Neb Taui, or Lord of the Two Lands, Neb Taui. If we put this all together, we get Neb Taui Usir Ma'at Ra Setept in Ra. Lord of the Two Lands. Usir Ma'at Ra Setept in Ra. The next Shinu that we will investigate uh, again has symbols that are familiar and some symbols that we would need to have a greater discussion on. If we look at this Shinu in two segments, we can see two Necheru at the top, this is honorific positioning, and four sacred symbols below the Necheru. In this representation, Necheru is symbolized in human form. He is distinguished by the Egyptian falcon head with a solar disk, which could be the origin of the halo. Necha Amen is symbolized as a man wearing a crown with two vertical feathers. The two images on the right represent a clearer picture of the Necheru. We have Ra and Amen. The new symbol for this Chinu is the canal. It's a bilateral MR pronounced Mary. Uh, it, we can also see three sacred symbols from earlier lessons, the three fox skins, uh, the folded cloth, and the suit plant. These three symbols can be read as Masut.
When we take into account the honor honorific positioning of Ra and Amun, this has been translated as Amun Meri Ra Mesut. Amun Meri Ra Mesut. This Shinu can be easily identified as the Sa Ra name because uh, right in front of the Shinu or right above the Shinu, we see the pintail duck and the solar disk. Therefore, we know that this is Sa Ra, Amen Neri Ra Mesut. Recognizing the title Sa Ra, we get this. Uh, as Sara Amen Mary Ra Mesut. This identifies this Tekken as belonging to the African called Ramesses II by foreigners. We see that, this, that his actual name is Amen Mary Ra Mesut. If we return to the top of the first column, we can, get, we can begin to read from the top down. In this case, uh, what do we see? We can see a man standing uh, that is a wall in front of him. The wall is a trilateral. It is I N B, and the figure of a man is transliterated as K D. Or a builder, so this is Neb Ked, Neb Ked, builder. The three symbols below represent temples, uh, and it's a triliteral. Each one is a triliteral by itself. It is transliterated as H W T, Hoot. Uh, the three of them together tells us that this is plural, so we add a W to indicate plurality. So this would be pronounced Hutu. The doorbolt as ripple of water N and three vertical strokes are read as Sanu and has been identified as the pronoun our. Three vertical strokes are used to indicate the plural in Meruneche. It has the same effect as the S or ES in English. Using this transliteration, we can read the first column as followed. Ineb Ked, Hutu, Sanu, Neb Taui, Usir Ma'at Ra, Setept In Ra, Sara, Amin Ra, Mesut. As we move on to the middle column, central column, we will see some familiar symbols and some new symbols. The sacred symbols at the top of the column show two folded cloths, the ripple of water, and a leg with a vessel pouring water. The folded cloth and ripple of water are familiar symbols. The vessel pouring water is transliterated as pure and transliterated as WB. Uh, we put an A in between to allow us to pronounce it as WAB. I believe the second folded cloth is a part of the word SEN which is a pronoun meaning he, his, or him. A uh, better reading would require knowing which sacred symbols preceded are above pure. So we get swab sen. Looking below swab sen, we see some familiar sacred symbols. However, there are some new metal nature. Uh, specifically, along with the solar disk here, we see Ra. The Netya Ra is represented in human form. 
and shown with a curve vid, which is an indication that we are representing or looking at a nature. There is also the vertical symbol for the idea of one right below the solar disk and in front of the Netura. We translate this symbol as it is what it is. The bow without a handle is transliterated and be translated as Lord, pronounced Neb. The, the door bolt uh, right below Neb is transliterated as S or Z. Below that, we see, again, neb with the plural sign. So if we combine the S with the door bolt from the door bolt and the neb, we get neb. The three vertical strokes, again, representing plurality and transliterated uh, as W, pronounced as U. So our best attempt at reading this Neronetje is Neb Neche Ra Senebu, Lord God Ra, our Lord. And even though Neb is written after Neche Ra, I want to believe it should be read first. Neche Ra is written first because of honorific positioning in Neronetje. As we continue to read down the second column, we see Medonetia that we've encountered in lesson three, uh, the head, the mouth, and the tongue of land. The tongue of land is read and transliterated as T. Uh, the head facing forward is read as HR hair and the mouth is the phonetic complement R. And again, we see the vertical stroke on the right, which tells us that it is what it is, and it is what it is, is something facing the land. The horizontal symbol above the tongue of land is a pool and is transliterated SH. This gives us Shet hair. If we combine the ideas of a pool and land, it could represent irrigation. So with the combination of hair and Shet hair, I would suggest that this Nedonetia may be translated as the first irrigated land. Right below Shed Hair, we see the pool again and some new Nedonetia symbols which we have not encountered in previous lessons. We can read the pool as SH. The sacred symbol below and to the left is a hill and is transliterated as Ka, K A A, and pronounced Ka. To the right of Ka is the Menonetje for time, Shepet which leads me to believe that the pool may be acting as a phonetic complement, the SH in Chipet. Chipet is a triliteral, S-H-P-T. Another new uh, set of Netonetia 
are the two vertical strokes, which represent duality and is transliterated uh, as a Y. So if we read these uh, symbols together, we get Ka Hyopeti. I'm not quite sure how to translate this into English. Um, something with the time twice, irrigation, hill, I'm not sure of the translation. So transliterating the symbols, we still get Ka Shepti. Uh, continuing down this central column, we see four familiar symbols and some new metonetia. The familiar symbols are the uchik, W, the loaf of bread, T, the horned viper, F, and earlier in this lesson, we saw the three plural strokes. The new metonetia that we're adding to our vocabulary is a tall water pot, which is transliterated as HST. It's a triliteral. The loaf of bread is a phonetic complement in this case. The uchik, again, uh, gives us uh, uh, aid in remembering that we have a plurality. And the horned viper is the pronoun for he, his, or him. Hesutu, again, would suggest something about the waters or his waters, Hesutu F, uh, remembering that in this column we have uh, other symbols for water, two pools, and at the very top, the symbol for pure, Swabsen. So I'm going to suggest that there's some connection between all of the symbols in the column. We have pure, we have water, we have irrigation. Again, we see some familiar metal nature and some new metal nature. We see the hill, we see the leg and the foot, and we see the chick, but it's in a different format, and we see the door bolt. We will start with the sacred symbol on the top right. This is a symbol of the human intestines. It is transliterated as KB, uh, and we place the A to pronounce it, so it is pronounced Cobb. Because the intestine is pronounced Cobb and the hillside is Ka, it is a suggestion that the Ka. Uh, is a phonetic complement of Cobb. The leg and foot is uh, phonetically a B, uh, transliterated as a B. Uh, this also suggests that the uh, hill and the leg and the foot are the phonetic complements to remind us that the intestines is pronounced Cobb. Often a coil of rope replaces the quail chick. And in this particular case, uh, we have the coil, coil rope instead of the, the quail chick or the u chick. Uh, it is also uh, transliterated as WRU. And at the bottom, we see the door bolts again, which is either S or Z, you can pronounce S or pronounce S or Z. Uh, so we have Kaboos. So these uh, set of symbols uh, represent the transliterated as Kaboos. Uh, again, not clear what the translation would be, but because it has the intestines, it suggests there's something long. So if we transliterate this into letters that we can recognize, 
as K B W S. Again, putting in an A to uh, allow us to pronounce it. We might pronounce this as Kabuz, uh, Kabu S. Okay, we've seen all of this middle net here before. The three vertical strokes for plurality and the vertical stroke for it is what it is were introduced in this uh, lesson, lesson four. We see the head facing forward, which is hair, the eye, arit, uh, which is from an early lesson, along with the phonetic complement R and T. Uh, the plural strokes give us the W sound. So we get hair, aritu. At the bottom is the horn viper. Again, a pronoun. It is transliterated with the letter F and translated as he, him, or his. So we get hair, hair aritu, F. So here, Aritu F has some suggestion of facing him facing the all seeing eye. And again, the best uh, way to suggest the pronunciation of this is here, Aritu F. The last set of middle nature to examine in this column are the eye, ripple of water, and horn viper, all familiar from earlier readings of middle nature. This would give us arit and f. Arit is to see or eye, as in the look, n to f his arit and f it's possible that the preceding horn viper may belong with this set of venonetia which could be read as he sees for him uh, at the very very bottom of this column we see the pintail duck and ra so we know that this is Sarah. So using the transliteration we have, we could read the center column as Swab Sen, Nebra, Senebu, Shethair, Ka Shepeti, Hesu, F, Kabuz, Hair, Aritu, F, Arit and F. I'm not going to try to translate that. There is a small set of metal net here, which we haven't seen before in the last column. So we will uh, look at that. Again, the goal is to read the metal net here, the translation. I'm going to leave it to someone else. The horizontal symbol at the very top could be the tongue of a land. I'm not sure. It's not easy to tell if there is something above it or not. The sacred symbol on the left is the representation of a column. It is a triliteral and is transliterated as uh, Iun. It's transliterated as I-W-N, translated as Iun. The circular shape is a jar. It is called a new jar. It is transliterated uh, NW or NU. Uh, it is a biliteral. Uh, below the new jar is Medonetia for is the Medonetia symbol for village or town. Uh, it's pronounced nude, uh, but it, in this case, it is used as a determinative. So we would not actually pronounce it. It would simply uh, let us know that we are talking about a city. So it's possible that the top symbol could be a ripple of water and a phonetic complement. I can't really tell. 
the sacred city of Iunu is called On or Heliopolis in current literature. Different invaders use different names for the same place. On, Iunu, or Heliopolis are all different names for the sacred city of Ra. And if we remember uh, in the center column, we saw the Netya Ra at the top of the center. So this Shanu is somehow related to the city of Iunu, uh, On, the sacred city of Ra. So again, uh, the very top, we see that this Shanu is somehow dedicated or represents something about the city of Iunu uh, On. The next set of symbols are also familiar, should be familiar. We've seen all of these before. We have the mouth R, the Nasut plant with its phonetic complement, loaf of bread. Here we have two reed leaves and they are transliterated as Y or I. Uh, they actually have the same value as the two vertical strokes. And we have the plural strokes, which are again transliterated as W or U. And so together that gives us the U. So far we would have Arnisut U. Arnisut you. The metal neck at the very top appears to have some additional marking, so I wasn't quite sure what it was. So I checked in Gardner's uh, dictionary to try to identify it. My best guess is that it's N39, uh, which is another water symbol. Um, again, it's transliterated as S or SH. So if we put these symbols together and try to pronounce it, we would get something like Sher Nesutiu. Again, uh, that's a pronunciation. I'm not quite sure of what it translates to in English. Following Sher Nesutiu is the pronoun F, uh, him or he. I'm not sure whether it goes with the share Nesutiu as a suffix free now, pronoun or with the Nebtaui as a uh, prefix pronoun. So our best attempt at reading of that column would give us Yunu share Nesutiu F Nebtaui Usir Ma'at Ra Septen Ra Sara Amen Mary Ra Nesu. So an attempt to read the three columns would give me Ineb Ked Hutu Senu Neb Taui Usir Ma'at Ra Setepten Ra Sara Amen Meri Ra Mesu Swab Sen Neb Ra Senebu Seter Ka Shepti Hesut S two F Kabuz Hair Aritu F Arit and F Yunu Sher Nesutiu F Nebtaui Usim at Ra Setepten Ra Sara Amen Mary Ra. We also see at the bottom, if you remember, we see the D Ankh. Mary Ra, only the D Ankh part is visible. Shemhotep, Lesson 5, will soon be presented.